This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, you were there for the uh, Princess Bride thing. Talk to us about when he gets this big offer. No, I wasn't. <laughs> well, when the movie comes out, you know what I mean. He's not. The, you're not there when he shoots it. You're there when it comes out. Was I really? You don't, I think, don't so? think so? No. When did that goddamn movie come out? 87. October of 87. Get the fuck out of here. Why, why would I make that up? I don't know why you make shit up. Because oh. you get your shit from fucking Dave Meltzer and it's all wrong. And it's and I know that's made up. So yeah, I, I, look, you know, for... Um, for Andre to be in a, there's so many things when you look at the Princess Bride. It was a Rob Reiner movie, huge director, huge name, and it just got it was critically acclaimed. Everyone loved it. So th yeah, that was a huge fucking deal for Andre, but it was also a huge deal for the business. And I, I think that more so than anything, it was an opportunity to see Andre in a different light. Right. And and probably. Uh, for most people to see him, you saw this kind of kind hearted and you got to see glimpses of the real, of the real Andre and the real boss in that movie. How old are you? Let's talk about, um, the other opportunities that they had. They talked to Richard Keel. They talked to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They talked to Lou Ferrigno. They talked to a lot of folks who could have played this spot that ultimately Andre lands in the princess bride, but, uh, he has a, a booking cancel and the WWF allows him to go at least meet with Rob Reiner. And dude, this is like, of all the things Andre did, probably the thing he was most proud of, right? It was because it allowed people to see him in a different light and prove that he could do something else other than just being the big giant in the wrestling ring. And that was something that imagine living your life where every time that you step out of a, a private uh, gathering or your own home, that everywhere you go, people are staring at you and pointing at you and whispering about you. And you're, you're constantly uh, being approached by strangers uh, asking, are you so-and-so and can I get a picture? Can I get an autograph? And maybe you're having a bad day. Maybe, you know, you, you just found out a friend of yours or a uh, family member is sick or something like that. Or maybe you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. But every single time that you went out in public, there was nowhere to hide. There was no way to escape. You couldn't disguise yourself. There was no place to get comfortable because everything was made for people half your size. Right. Um. So yeah, he was judged an awful lot. I think that it was an opportunity for him to just be him. Princess Bride was such a big deal. Um, you know, not just for, for him, but for the company because it was going to expose him to an even bigger audience. Um, I do want to, all right, well, let's, uh, let's keep it moving here. we got tons of questions today. Uh, this one comes into us from monster mailman. He says, how did Andre end up doing a commercial for honeycombs? And why didn't he do the voice? It was dubbed. Honeycomb big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It not small. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that was his voice for some of it. I, I know the end of it, it was dubbed over. But they, they did use his voice for some of it. And yeah, it was, it was giant, man. Honeycomb was giant. So they needed a giant. I think that, and I think that was post. Yeah. Uh, Princess Bride. Hmm. So it was kind of off of that, off that fame as well. Brian wants to know outside of the ring, what would you consider Andre's greatest contribution to wrestling to be? Oh, I mean, outside of the ring, I think his greatest contribution was probably Princess Bride and, and the, longevity and being a part of a classic movie that will be enjoyed for generations. And people will always go, who was that giant? Well, that was Andre, the giant. 
Adam says, Andre said he turned down the surgery to fix his pituitary gland tumor. Um, he thought that his size was the will of God. Do you remember Paul Bosch, Vince senior or Vince ever trying to change his mind to lengthen his longevity? Well, the surgery to my knowledge didn't really come across his plate until much later in his life. So Andre kind of felt that this is what he was. This is who he was. That was his identity and anything to just go in and try and change his genetic makeup. He he wasn't really fond of wasn't something that he wanted to address. In 82 is when he finally hears that he needs to see a doctor about his condition. And around that same time, he gets opportunities to appear in a bunch of other TV shows like greatest American hero and the fall guy. Um, but until the princess bride, he's not giving speaking roles. What's the likelihood that Andre could have just walked away from, from wrestling here, much like Roddy Piper tried to, and a few others, when he starts to get this new interest, it does feel like he could really, really slow it down or just walk away completely. Was it just the love of the boys or the crowd or the lifestyle of being on the road that kept him around as long? Do you think? I think it was all the above Uh, wrestling was his family and wrestling is what he enjoyed to do. And it was the travel. It was the camaraderie and it was the freedom to do what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. I think that Hollywood was something that could have been there. However, you know, you reach, you reach a max out point with an attraction like Andre in Hollywood, no different than you would anywhere else. If you see too much of him, then you've got too much of him and he's only going to fit certain roles. Andre's not going to be a, wouldn't be as versatile as let's say the rock or even Hogan, um, just because of his, of his size and his, um, he had a little bit of a barrier to entry with his accent and his lack of enunciation of, of the English language. So yes, Andre could have done some things and did do a lot of things in Hollywood, but I think that Andre's heart was in wrestling. Andre's heart was in the locker room with the boys. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.